I swear one day I'm gonna be one of those legit YouTubers with like a really cool backdrop and a cool space to like do these videos from, but today is not that day. Friends, welcome back to my garage workshop. It has been a while since we have been in here. In fact, at the time that I'm recording this, it has been officially one year since I started this renovation that I thought would take me literally two months to do, but here we are, better late than ever. So if you missed it, I am in the process of turning my one and a half car garage into the garage workshop of my absolute dream. And today is a very exciting day because today we are getting rid of my table saw. Okay, okay, hear me out, hear me out. That was really dramatic. So if you've been here for a while, then you might remember I started my woodworking journey about 12 years ago out of the corner of my dad's storage shed. And from there, I then went to a slightly bigger shed. It was a 12 by 12 shed that my dad and I built together. And now we are in a one and a half car garage. So for about a decade, I have been consistently using job site saws or compact saws in my space, but that's it's gonna change today. So now that I have more space to work, I am finally officially upgrading my table saw to a big girl cabinet saw. I have been dreaming of this moment for so, so long. And you know that safety comes first in the shop. So of course I upgraded to a saw stop table saw. We're gonna talk more about why I am upgrading to a cabinet saw a little later in this video. But in addition to the big girl saw upgrade, I am also getting something that I've wanted in my workshop for literally 12 years since I started building in a workshop and that is a dedicated outfeed table. I have always wanted an outfeed table. I've never had the space for an outfeed table, but now that I'm in a bigger workshop space, it is time for a dedicated saw and a dedicated outfeed table. And we're gonna build that together today. So friends, let's get started. So excited. So excited. This video is sponsored by my friends at SawStop. Friends, I am so stoked about this project. First of all, it is absolutely a dream come true to be able to have an outfit table in my workshop. And also your girl just celebrated a birthday recently and her body feels like it's falling apart. So to not have to work on the floor anymore would be ideal. But for real though, this is a pretty simple build that I am building in two parts because it is a pretty tight space in here. But as always, I will link a full tutorial as well as plans for this project on my website. And you can find that by clicking on the link below this video. Oh man, I just had this realization that this is probably the last time I'm gonna be cutting a project on the floor of my workshop. It's so bittersweet. I'm really excited to not be crawling on the floor anymore, but man, I've never had an outfit table. It's all I've ever wanted. I'm so excited, okay. Never ending screen. Oh, I do usually shut my microphone off when I have my headphones in because I am a singer in the shop and no one wants to hear that. So let me mute me. You're welcome in advance. So clearly at this point in the process, I do not have my new table saw set up. That is because there is a ton of material in the way and this table saw is actually pretty big. So I really just wanted to cut down as much as I could into usable pieces to create my outfeed table before even thinking about unpacking the saw. And I did that using a circular saw for now. I will be cutting some more custom pieces on that table saw later in the process once it is set up. But for now, we're just focusing on most of the big stuff needed to create the actual cabinet boxes for the outfeed table. Now, if you've been here for a little bit, you might remember my friend Shara came to visit and she helped me build the other cabinets in my workshop. So I'm building this outfit table essentially the same exact way that we built those cabinets. So if you're looking for another type of tutorial for a similar style cabinet to the one that I'm building, you can check that out. I've linked those videos below this one. They're really helpful. They turned out rad and I'm frankly kind of obsessed. You could be my pocket hole princess and I'll be your garage workshop queen. I'm listening to too much pop punk, I think, in my workshop. Just kidding, there's no such thing as too much pop punk, emo kid at heart. Anyway, let's drill some pocket holes in these boards so we can get this thing assembled or at least half of it. Once those cabinet box pieces were cut, it was then time to start assembling them. I used pocket hole joinery for this part of the project. I don't know, you guys know I love pocket hole joinery. They're just easy, they're strong, you can hide them. They're just great. Anyway, so once I did that, next it was time to just make everything look nice and neat. And I did this by using one of my favorite woodworking tricks in the books, and that is adding some edge banding to the raw plywood edges to make the plywood look like fancy hardwood. 
Favorite woodworking magic trick? Edge banding. Let's make these plywood edges look better. Oh, hi, Papa. Well, before we do that, let's have some puppy time. Hi, Papa. Come say hi. Hi, 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 Wiggles. Hi, Wiggles. Hi, Wiggles. Hi, hi, hi. Back in action. Let's make these plywood edges look nicer. Okay, so I know what some of you might be thinking. You're like, Sam, why are you spending time edge banding your workshop cabinets? And I hear you, but hear me out. So my vibe, my vision for this space was I just want it to be more than a workshop. This place is functioning as my happy place, my studio, my creative place to film and do some work. And I really wanted all of the cabinets in this space to feel finished. And I wanted the space to feel clean and inspiring. So I am going the extra mile in this workshop. And so far I haven't regretted a single minute of spending some extra time doing fine detail work like adding some edge banding. In fact, I'm pretty sure the next video that I'll be doing in this space is adding a fun accent wall and some little things to make this space feel more homey. And I just know that this is gonna be such a really rad space when it's done. And I really can't wait to share that entire vision with all of you. But that being said, we are getting a little bit ahead of ourselves because that's the next video. Let's talk about this video. At this point, once everything was edge banded, it was time to start assembling the cabinet boxes. Like I mentioned, I assembled the entire outfit table in two parts because it is a tight space to work in. Ideally, I would have loved to have built just like a giant cabinet and just added some dividers, but it wasn't really an option for the space I'm working in at the current moment. And this worked out just fine. I literally out loud was just like, it's going so well. Jinxed it. I put this on backwards. So I put this on with the non edge banding side facing out. It's supposed to be this side here. Also, this is a little wonky because it's not squared up up top. It'll fix itself. But I think what I'm gonna do is finish just putting the cabinet together and then take this piece out and flip it. Cause it's gonna be so annoying to try to edge band to this while it's already in. So, ugh, annoying, but minor mishap. These things happen. Let's keep going. So for my goal for day one for this build is actually pretty much just to pre-cut all the pieces, sand them, get them edge banded, but I did end up having a little bit extra time, which worked in my favor because I was able to assemble one whole side of the outfeed table cabinet. But once that was done, I did decide to call it a very successful day and then move on to the second side on the next day. All right, friends, we are back in the workshop. First side's done, been done since yesterday. Second side pieces are all sanded and ready to roll. So let's assemble the second side. And then I'm pretty sure my dad's coming over to help me unpack this saw so we can figure out where everything's going. This garage used to feel very big and now it's starting to feel a little tiny <laughs> seeing everything kind of in the space. So I'm excited about the saw though, so let's do it. Let's get some music on. So this is the part of the project where building this thing in two parts really made sense. As you can see, I'm pretty much duplicating what I did on the other side to this side, and then I'm going to attach them together and be able to level them once they are attached. I didn't want this to look like two separate cabinets, so I am gonna be adding a big panel to the ends of them in a little bit, just to make it look like a solid cabinet. But as you can kind of see, there wasn't a ton of room to work here, and this outfit table is going to be taking up a majority of my workshop at this point, so building it in pieces just made total sense. Eventually too, in future project planning. I am going to be making some custom storage for inside of this outfit table, which I'm super stoked about because I'm gonna be keeping some bigger tools in here. So definitely stay tuned for that. I think that's gonna be rad. Tops in, again somewhere, woo! Yes, yes, it's lining up very, very well. I love that. All right, so once the cabinet base was ready to roll, it was pretty much time to then assemble my table saw, which was definitely a two person operation. Don't you worry, your favorite human being, my dad is coming over to help me with this part of the project. And the feeling of love is very mutual. He loves you all as much as you love him. Nice. 
But anyway, now that we are at table saw setup time, I do want to take a few moments here to talk about exactly why I'm swapping out my portable compact table saw for a big girl professional cabinet saw from SawStop. And honestly, the list is pretty big. So first things first, I have always wanted a heavy duty stationary table saw setup in my workshop, but I knew that if I was going to make the leap to a forever saw, it had to be a SawStop. So every SawStop comes equipped with a patented safety system, which retracts the spinning saw blade if it ever comes in contact with skin. I mean, have you seen those viral hot dogs? videos because they speak for themselves. But anyway, on top of the safety component, I also wanted a powerful saw which wouldn't bind or trip when cutting different materials, and I wanted something reliable and sturdy as well, which are all features of the professional cabinet saw. Listen, I love my job site saws, but I constantly had to level a job site saw before using it since it was meant to be mobile, and now I barely have any setup time before cutting, which is really rad. Just saying, I have quickly come to understand why the professional cabinet saw is SawStop's most popular saw for sure. I have a big girl saw. What'd you get? Oh, I love the height. How perfect. perfect height? I'm a shorty. This is perfect height for me. Ooh, take it she's sexy. Oh my God. So dad's all excited about helping me set up my new saw. Wonderful. It comes with everything you need and a dissertation like manual to tell you how to assemble your saw. So we are gonna take some time to figure this out. We're gonna get, we'll see, we'll see. Dad thinks it's gonna take a month. Yeah, probably closer to that. So we're gonna assemble the saw and then once that's done, I'm gonna be assembling the fence as well. So this is gonna take up a lot of space in here, but it's gonna be worth it. Right, Dad? He says maybe. He's gonna be in here using this thing probably more than I am. You're stealing the small one. He already called the compact saw. Smart move. All right, let's do this. In terms of assembly, SawStop could not have made this process any easier. Every part was labeled beautifully. The manual was very detailed. Dad and I were able to pretty much knock this thing out throughout the rest of the evening after he came over to help me set it up. Also, just want to note, it was really important to get this thing set up while the cabinet was still empty without a top because I did have to kind of move it around the workshop a little bit to figure out where the perfect placement was and between the saw and the cabinet, I just wanted things to be as light as possible while trying to figure out the layout because this thing is taking up a majority of my workshop. How's it look? Does it look like a real shop? No. What the hell? Not enough sawdust, I agree. Ah, this is like crazy. I can't believe I have a big girl saw in here. I've always wanted one. My dream has been to have an outfit table and now I get it. Yeah, we need to put throw a level on there. I got leveling feet for the cabinet. Where is my level? It's gotta come up on this side. Ooh, so close. Okay, so this isn't so bad. I don't know why I was freaking out that it was gonna be too big. Scheming and dreaming. Once that table saw was set up, I could have very easily continued the cabinet build, but hear me out, these lights in this workshop have been annoying me since the day they were installed, so I did decide to take some time before things got too heavy to replace the lights in the shop, and I also decided to get up on the ladder and just stain all of those pieces of wood up top that were not the same color as the rest of the roof, the same color as the rest of the roof, and now I don't gotta worry about it anymore that everything is permanently in place. So just a little bit of detail work here, nothing wild. I'll share more about this entire process and all of my options that I chose for decor and whatever when we talk about the entire build as a whole. But once I was happy with this, it was time to get back on to that cabinet build and finish up my dreamy outfit table for my brand new saw. Friends, in YouTube time, it's been a second since I've been in this shop. In real time, it's been about a week since I've been in the shop. And as you can see, not much has changed. We still have this hollow box in the middle of my shop. So today's goal is I want to add these like leveling furniture feet to the bottom of the outfit table. That way I can level the table with the table. Yeah, that makes sense. This is just a temporary piece here to help me with leveling. The real pieces I need are in there. So once it's level, we'll get the tops on, do a final leveling. And then hopefully I can get the doors on these cabinets. We'll see. I also am still waiting for my electrician to come to finish doing the electrical hookup for the saw. But once he does that, we can hop on the saw, power that bad boy up and start cutting all of the custom pieces for this outfit table and get this thing done. I'm so excited. It gets really dark really early now. Let's just do this. Let's get started. 
So quick disclaimer, I don't know what happened to the footage for this portion of the build, so I did pull this off of my phone because I've been recording with my phone as well for social media, but anyway, not the point. The point is that after I did the leveling feet and leveled this cabinet with my table saw, it was time to add the butcher block tops and they looked amazing. Now, I definitely cut them down to size using my circular saw once they were attached to the cabinets, but I did decide I wanted a little bit of an overhang to have some stools so I could have another place in the shop to sit and work. And I'm so stoked that I did that. But at this point, pretty much the cabinet was done and it was time to fire up the table saw for those beautiful finishing touches. I feel like most people are so excited to get the keys to a new car, but this girl is so excited about the keys to a table saw. Are you kidding me? Top is dry. Everything is squared up and calibrated. Let's fire up this table saw today. I'm so excited. Let's cut out the final pieces we need for this outfit table. This might be the best day ever. I think this is the best day ever. Ooh, she's smooth. That cuts like butter. Okay, a couple thoughts. It cuts so nicely, like does not struggle at all. Secondly, it is quieter than my job site saw, which I'm so happy about. I was really nervous about the noise level. And third, it's super sturdy. Like I'm not worried, it's not. It's gonna wobble, it is level. Having an outfit table, I think is like literally life-changing. I'm so excited. Like I can't wait to cut more pieces. Let's cut more pieces. Oh my God, I love having an outfit table so much. It feels like a dream. I could probably geek out for hours about how much I love having a cabinet saw and an outfit table in my workshop. But instead of doing that, we're gonna move on with this project because otherwise I'll be talking for hours. But essentially having the table saw to cut all of those final detail pieces for my cabinet was so, so helpful. Best day ever. So last up on this build were little things like toe kicks as well as some cabinet doors. And like I mentioned, I'll be adding some custom organization to this as my shop continues to evolve. So stay tuned for that in a future project. Oh my goodness. I love having a work surface that I can clamp things to. Ah! These little things that I've been like dreaming of and thinking of and like envisioning for a future workshop, especially having spent all those years in the shed and like they're finally coming to life. Mm. Like the little things, like being able to clamp something to an outfit table. Ah! Once the doors were set and all of like that final trim was done, it was then time for just those little minute final details on this outfit table, such as adding cabinet handles and adding some wood finish. And then this was pretty much a project. Now I am going to be the first one to admit that there are many things that need to happen in this space still for it to feel complete. For instance, all the organization, adding some dust collection, figuring out my scrap wood storage. But what I will say is that ever since I put this outfit table in my shop, it really is feeling like a shop and I am so, so excited about being in here every single day. So one last thing I just wanted to note, I wanna give a quick shout out to Shara because she had suggested keeping the outfit table a natural wood color instead of staining it black to match the rest of the cabinets. And I gotta say, it was a great suggestion. It really does make the space feel big and bright. And I really like the contrast between the outfit table and the rest of the cabinets in the space. And like I mentioned, she helped me build the rest of the cabinets in this workshop. So if you haven't checked out her channel already, please go do so. She is so talented and she's just like amazing at everything she does. I could not have done it without her. That being said, are you ready to see my new table saw set up? Because I think it's pretty rad. I know I keep repeating myself here, but I have waited 12 years to have an outfit table and a table saw set up just like this one. And the fact that it's here and it's happening feels like an absolute dream come true. And I know that my fellow woodworkers out there totally understand that feeling. It is a really great feeling. 
And while this workshop has taken a lot longer to come together than I thought it would initially, it is coming together so beautifully and I can't wait to finish this up and share this exciting new happy place with all of you. In fact, I would not have this happy place if it wasn't for you. So thank you all so much for being on this journey with me. I love you and appreciate you all so, so much. That being said, I have been hustling off my behind. So there are more projects coming at you very soon. Please make sure to subscribe and click the notification bell so you do not miss a thing. In the meantime, though, friends, I will see you so soon with another project. But until then, happy DIYing.